Welcome back to the Area 1 International Speech Contest. If you use your cell phone during the break, please take a moment and ensure that it is on silent, or better yet, turn it off. Once the contest has begun, the Sergeant at Arms will be securing the doors. Members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during our contestants' presentations this evening. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it has been determined that all ballots have been counted and collected. Please, once again, take a moment and make sure that your device of mass distraction is either turned off or on silent mode. <laughs> we will now proceed with the International Speech Contest. I would like to first share the speaking order for our International Speech Contest tonight. Our first speaker this evening is Robert Borkowski. Again, our first speaker for the International Speech Contest is Robert Borkowski. Our second speaker this evening is Bob Chikos. Again, our second speaker this evening is Bob Chikos. Speaker number three will be Jim Cudney. Speaker number three, Jim Cudney. And speaker number four, Tim Folger. Again, speaker number four, Tim Folger. There will be one minute of silence between each of our contestants tonight. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me when the green light is on and the minute is up. After all the contestants have spoken, the judges will then be given time to collect and complete ballots. Once again, let the contest begin. Tonight, Bob Chico's 30 yards, 30 yards, Bob Chico's. Where were you in 1988? A few people here looked like they weren't even born yet. <laughs> I was entering high school. In junior high, I was what might be called a loser. <laughs> Actually, I was called a loser. In fact, there were many names for an obese D student like I was. But I had a dream that was going to save me. Did you have a dream when you were 14? Mine was football. Since I was 7 years old, it was all that I cared about. And it was going to be my ticket to being cool. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I was more passionate about football than I am about competing in the International Speech Contest. <laughs> <laughs> On the first day of practice, Coach sized us up. My goal is to turn you from boys into men. <laughs> he worked on his goal two hours at a time. Three times a day, every day but Sunday throughout August. Near the end of each practice, when we had nothing left in the tank, we had conditioning. All sorts of draconian torture. Everything hurt, and I kept telling myself, it's just a little bit more. One day after conditioning, I took off my helmet. Heat was radiating from my body. Sweat was stinging my eyes. I tasted dirt and salt. I headed towards the water pipe. Put your helmets back on, boys. Two of your teammates decided to come late to practice today. As a result, 
They will watch the rest of you bear crawl until they learn their lesson. <laughs> bear crawl? <clears throat> Not that. Crawling on my hands and feet, wearing 20 pounds of equipment? Uh, I had no upper body strength. Uh, uh. I saw other guys just get up and leave. I couldn't quit. Football was all I had. Come on, it's just a little bit more. After 100 yards of this, we had to sprint back to coach. <laughs> Not everybody made it back in time. I guess our two friends haven't learned their lesson yet. Go again. <coughs> I kept trying to convince myself that it was just a little bit more. And I bear crawled another 100 yards. But I ran back 70. My legs quit. Remember that dream you had when you were 14? Do you remember when you realized it wasn't going to happen? <laughs> when I looked down that field and saw those goal posts waving in the heat, I knew mine wouldn't happen. Those 30 remaining yards may as well have been 30 miles. I couldn't do it. I was a loser. And then somebody yanked on my jersey. It was Casey, a lineman who was breathing heavier than I was. I'm done. If we don't finish these, he's going to make us do more. <laughs> he said I'm done. I'm quitting. Oh, come on, man. Look, it's just a little bit more. Remember when Neil Armstrong said, that was one small step for a man? <laughs> Well, this is one small step toward becoming a man, for both of us. With Casey dragging me along, my legs moved. We sounded like a couple of bagpipes going down that field. <laughs> <laughs> but together we made it. Coach was finally satisfied, and we survived practice. <laughs> I'd like to say that this was the breakthrough of a stellar football career. <laughs> but I can say that life got better in high school. I learned that football doesn't make you cool, but being a good teammate does. And practice has got easier after that. Or maybe we got stronger. We hated Coach, but he wasn't the enemy. He was helping us conquer the enemy, of trying to do everything on our own. When he punished us, he made us accountable to each other. When he created impossible tasks, he made us rely on each other. And when he wouldn't let us drink water, well, that was just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> His goal was to turn us into men, which I thought meant making us muscular and fearsome. <laughs> But now I realize it meant to help each other. <coughs> Goal met, coach. Fast forward to 26 years. <laughs> to 2014. Casey and I reconnected. Thanks to the miracle of Facebook. <laughs> instead of trying to survive on the football field, we're just trying to survive. Turns out we both had serious medical conditions. Casey had a stomach condition that was baffling his doctors. He needed major surgery. And one of the toughest guys I'd ever met said that he was scared. And he needed strength to get through the surgery. I did the only thing I could think of. It started with, Casey, you might not remember this. And it ended with, and that's the tough son of a gun who's going to make it through surgery. <laughs> After 26 years, it was finally my turn to pull Casey 30 yards. And just like when we were freshmen, together, we made it. People all around us are bear crawling through adversity, thinking they'll never make it to the end. They need just a little bit more that they can't do themselves. And they probably won't ask for help. Will you be there, Casey? 
Hannah Tosmas. May we please have one minute of silence while the judges complete their ballots. Jim Cudney, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not, Jim Cudney. Many of you are probably familiar with the parable of the Chinese farmer. As a reminder, and for those of you who aren't, it essentially has to do with the story of a farmer in China who had a series of events occur in his life <coughs> to which his neighbors and friends would say were either fortunate or unfortunate for him. First, his horse ran away, and his neighbors said, how unfortunate for you. And he said, maybe, maybe not. A few days later, the horse came back, and there were other horses following that horse back <laughs> to the farm. The neighbor said, how fortunate said, maybe, maybe not. The son was training one of these new horses and fell off and broke his leg. How unfortunate. Maybe, maybe not. Soon, a war erupted in a neighboring village and the soldiers came in, took all the young men. Of course, his son couldn't go because his leg was broken. Many of them were injured or died. How fortunate. Maybe. Maybe not. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, sometimes life doesn't give us the answers that succinctly as to the things that occur in our life. And sometimes misfortune, or what people would label as misfortune, come fast and furious. We've all experienced it. I am coming off a year just like that. In this past year, I lost a sister to cancer. I finished a divorce that had languished for three years, lost my home. My business was struggling. I ended up having to sell it even though I didn't want to. I became good friends with the IRS. <laughs> in the middle of it, my girlfriend who I was moving forward in life with and I broke up. Any one of these things, of course, could bring chaos into your life. All of the other things that were occurring seemed minor. The car that got totaled, the coyote that took my favorite chicken. I even wrote about this as a catharsis for the humorous speech contest in the fall. I gave a really funny speech. <laughs> the icing on the cake was I was disqualified for going over time. <laughs> For a seasoned Toastmaster, this is like LeBron James getting a three-second call in the playoffs. <laughs> you don't do those kinds of things. Well, what have I learned? I started to feel like I was Job for, for part of this. We're all familiar with the story of Job in the Old Testament. He got his own book. He got so messed with <laughs> He had it all. He had riches, friends, family. And God and the devil are standing around talking one day, not sure why they get together, but they, and God is saying, look how faithful Job is to me. And 
the devil says, well, yeah, he's got everything. You know, why don't you let me mess with him, and then we'll see how faithful he is to you. And the crazy part of the story is, is that God says yes. And uh, I'm hoping this is allegory, otherwise my idea of uh, free will is being turned on its head. And, uh, it's quite disturbing. So God says yes, and the devil goes mano on him. Kills his family, wipes out his crops. I'm making it short here. He even kills most of his friends, and Job has awful sores. He's sitting, and the friends are telling him, you, you, you've got to just curse God and get it over with. And even his wife is nagging him. And this is proof, of course, that uh, even the Dark Lord has a sense of humor, for he kills the whole family but leaves the nagging wife. <laughs> <laughs> what have I learned from this year? Well, let me tell you some of the lessons that I've learned that hopefully can help some of you who may be struggling or to help others who are struggling. The first thing I learned is be grateful. Grateful for both the good and the bad. It's not always easy, of course, but either you believe God or the universe is for you or against you. I believe it's for you and that it loves you. And so, rather than say, why is this happening to me? Say, why is this happening? <laughs> so be grateful. Secondly, take responsibility. It's important that we take responsibility for those decisions points where we may have made decisions that went against what we knew we should have done. The signs are always there. But sometimes our ego or laziness leads us in the wrong direction, and the universe has to sometimes two, three times for the thick-headed ones of us to get us back on that right path. So take responsibility. A big part of taking responsibility is forgiveness, and especially forgiving yourself as well as others who maybe you've been blaming. The third and I think most important lesson I've learned is find your friends. Friends separate out during times like this. People don't want to hear about things when you're not doing great. But the true friends are there. And many of the true friends that helped me through some very dark times this past year were Toastmasters. Leadership is about empathy. It is about, this is a quote from one of the preeminent philosophers of our time, so I want to get it right. Leadership is about empathy. It is about having the ability to relate to and connect with people for the purpose of inspiring and empowering their lives. And that great philosopher is Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. Toastmasters is about leadership and about empathy. One of those friends who helped me the most was a man named Norman. And Norman was an amazing individual. And I used to drive Norman to and from Toastmasters every day, every time we would have a meeting. Norman was active in our club, but a number of years ago had a terrible accident when he was riding a bicycle, was hit by an SUV. And he struggled with things that are just easy for us in everyday life, in almost everything. And yet every time I would pick him up, he would greet me. Hello, beautiful child of God. He always had something positive to say. There were mornings when I didn't even want to get out of bed. But I knew how much Norman enjoyed Toastmasters, and I never regretted picking him up and being encouraged by him, this strong man. Ladies and gentlemen, all of these things are about the Chinese parable and give us perspective. Is this a problem in my life? Are these things unfortunate? Maybe. Maybe not. Madam Toaster. May we have one minute of silence, please, while the judges mark their ballots.
Tim Bolger, The Fence. The Fence, Tim Bolger. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. How many of you struggle with all the things you have to do in life? Those where you're constantly pleasing others, or those things that must be done, and those things that you want to do? I have no dramatic story. I have no real big moment to tell you about, except for the fact that every day I deal with the struggle of, do I help others? or do I do the things necessary to help myself? And I can tell you, with me being a people pleaser and getting a lot of joy out of seeing others helped by my efforts, it can be a very hard thing to not to have to say no to people. It can also be an equally hard thing for me to take time out for myself. And for many of you who are overscheduled, or maybe don't know how to say no, perhaps the next few minutes will give you some advice. Psychiatrists have always said, learn how to set a boundary. Learn how to put a fence up and let your yes be yes and your no be no. But I'm gonna tell you, it is really hard building that boundary fence. Let's go to stake one, for example. We'll call this my hobby. As many of you already know, I do a lot of video. I film speech contests in my church and a weekly free speech forum and all of a sudden says, hey Tim, I want you to help me get some, a wedding and I'm thinking to myself, a wedding? Uh, 20 hours of editing, uh, days where I can't really leave the, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say no. Tim, what about uh, coming in and uh, helping me do a little bit of a, I just want a five minute video shot in the forest preserve. All of a sudden, 185 edits later, they're still not satisfied. <laughs> I am a party, but I'm gonna have to abandon the project. No. <laughs> Let's go to this one here. We'll call this stake two. We'll call this my job. Uh, yes, I know I sell electronics on eBay and Amazon, and it's Christmas time, and I just put in a 17 hour day yesterday. Boss. I'm afraid I can't stay over and get this project done over this five little dollar thing that you think you just lost. I'm gonna to have to say no and go home. Or you have a big Toastmasters meeting coming up at a conference, you put in for it for a long time. Tim, I need you to just come in tomorrow and boss, you know better. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to stake three. <clears throat> we'll call this one the wife and the kids. And many of you have things with wife and kids. But be being single, it's easy. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> now we go to stake four. <laughs> Church and your pastor. I film every week. Hey, Tim, you know, you do such a good job taping for us. We need some help back in the children's ministry. Pastor, be deal with kids. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to say no. <laughs> well, there you have it. Four stakes. Now you have to string that fence. Pull that, well, pull that string tight and make sure it. But you always have people come by. Tim, you promised me you'd do this for me. And then all this. <coughs> what you do? You tighten that wire with the wrench of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> Works, but... Remember, wires do get loose, and eventually you're going to have to make the projects happen. Well, now you got your boundary fence. Now you're moving along pretty good. Your bills are getting paid. Your place is starting to look a little neater. You're actually thinking I'm pretty good, but you know there's something missing? You've built all these boundaries. you said no so many times that you forget the one thing that is needed on a fence. And that is a big, wide gate. A gate that you can open and say, yes, pastor, I can film this project for you. I can do this video editing for you. 
and I'll give you four hours of editing time and we'll do the best we can with that. You finish the project, you shut the gate, and you're done. Pastor's happy, you're happy. We go to another thing, taping a friend. You open a gate, you say, hey, yes, I'll tape your event for you. I'll give you 10 DVDs, I will give you the first edit, but anything else, we'll have to talk about it because we have to charge you for some extra time involved if I'm going to have to really commit to the project. Gate's open, you do the job, when it's done, the gate closes. Or better yet, your dad, who always, every four days, hey, the grass needs to be cut. Dad, I'll tell you what, I can't do it all summer, but I'll open the gate. I'll give you four hours on Sunday. We'll make it look like a golf green. <laughs> we'll make it look like a golf green so for the next four days you can boast about all your things. Go over, you have some dad time, and then you shut the gate, and you're done. It is a very hard thing to keep a boundary, to say no. And I'm sure many of you also happen to can relate to these struggles. And in that constant struggle between yourself and your friends and obligations can make your mind almost double-minded. But remember what it says in James, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Is it necessary to set up a fence? I think in a sense we all do, because when we reach our bitter end, we string up the fence automatically. Isn't it a lot better though if we could just say, let your yes be yes and your no be no, for out of any much more evil will come. Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>
to know our contestants. I would like to request all the Table Topics contestants to please come up front and join me for an interview. All right. city that is safe, that is clean, and that can do it, you realize there are solutions to climate change, there are solutions to industrial development, and solutions to cleaning up our present day nuclear waste. I don't need to say any more about it, just Google Thorium MSR in Google and you'll find out all about it. Great. Thank you very much for participating tonight, not only in table topics, but also international speech. Toastmasters since uh, it was a wee little, no, uh, it's been quite a while. I was in a club in downtown Chicago for a number of years when I was working next door to the building where there was a lunchtime group, and when they decided they would outsource the work that I was doing and the work that the team I was on was doing, I found my way back to McHenry County Clubs and am now representing Crystal Lake Toastmasters 27-24. Great. I am a CC and an competent leader as well. Great. And I know that you are very into acting and singing. Can you tell us about that? How did you get involved? <coughs> when I was in high school, I did some dramatics in high school. Wasn't encouraged very much and also had trouble memorizing. But from a music standpoint, my mom was a music major in college, and she raised all of her four sons to appreciate music and to sing some, even taught us piano and so on. But when we were moving, my wife and I were moving out to Woodstock 15 years ago, last January, I said, oh, you know, one of the things that's cool about this town is they've actually got a couple of community theaters. And community theater groups, maybe, maybe I could get involved with that. Within two weeks of moving, I was auditioning for Cinderella. Not, not the role. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you wouldn't want to try to put my foot in a slipper. But, um, except maybe a bedroom slipper. But the, uh, I got five small roles in that, and I've since, over the last 15 years, been in about 25, 26 different shows, uh, mostly at the Woodstock Opera House. And the rest is history. The rest right is there, history. Right? Great. Thank you for participating tonight. Hello, oh, Seth Kelly. How long have you been in Toastmasters? Uh, nine years. Nine years. And what club are you representing tonight? The other Crystal Lake Club, yeah, Crystal yeah, Clear. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Education level in Toastmasters today? Lazy. <laughs> as, a, as a charter founder member of Crystal Clear, I should be further than I am, which this year we are rectifying that. I'm currently a CC and a CL. I, as you know, I've been an area governor and all this. I just need to actually just do the work and get my ALB, and I'll have my uh, ACB here as well. Okay. Year, so. One of the things I admire about you is your sense of humor. So where does the sense of humor come from? <coughs> Being an only kid, <laughs> there's not a lot to do. Uh, you got you, and if you're lucky, you got a dog. And 
you know, you got to entertain yourself. So <laughs> that's what I had to do. Great. Well, thank you very much for participating tonight. Oh, about 12 years. 12 years, okay. And what club are you representing tonight? Oh, Fox Valley. Yeah. yeah. And what is your Toastmasters education level? Bare minimum. <laughs> okay. One of the things I know you're very interested in is serving others. And tell me where that interest comes from. I think it was from my parents. Uh, my father would say there's people, they belong to civic organizations, and some of them were, were he called them knife and fork members. Mm -hmm. They'd come there just to, for the fellowship of eating, whereas the others would go there and do the hard work like you do behind the scenes work. And they'd <coughs> catch them doing a lot of that. My mother would be the secretary of clubs, and at the, the Kenry County Fair, they'd run at the food tent. They would volunteer, and much more than that, my mother, uh, Gave over 13 gallons of blood mm. and served 40 years in a volunteer role at Little Christopher's resale shop. Mm. So you get around all these volunteers, you kind of realize that there's a certain joy that doesn't come from my other sources other than volunteering. Great. Well, thank you very much for participating speech contestants to come forward. Okay, hello. hello. Robert, hello. nice to see you again. So how long have you been in Toastmasters? It's been about a year. A year? Okay. And which club are you representing tonight? Fox Valley. All right. Education level in Toastmasters. What are you working towards? I'm working toward a CC. I've done uh, enough speeches to qualify for this contest. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned to me we have a common interest here, and that's called self improvement, self development. Yes. Who is your favorite speaker that you follow, or motivational person? Well, it depends for me. There's a couple of them because I think each one, each person has their own individual knack. I, I like Bob Proctor because he talks about changing paradigms. Uh, it's a pattern that we have that we're programmed when we're young, so we got to un uh, unlearn, relearn. Uh, and there's also Joe Dispenza that teaches about uh, the chemistry and epigenetics and how we can change ourselves. So if we got like cancer or something like that, you can have a spontaneous remission. So the mind is very powerful, and that's one of my reasons why I joined Toastmasters is to, uh, because I wanted to write a book, not that I'm a writer or anything, but just I wanted to share my experiences with others, uh, and through my experiences, I wanted to let people know that they can have hope and faith, and you know, if they've been through like all the stuff I've been through, that they can surely make it through the difficult times in their lives. Great. Sounds like you've got a great outlook on life. And Yes, you need one, for sure. <laughs> I agree 100% with you on that. I want to thank you for participating thank you. tonight. Thank you. Since she was about one, so <laughs> <laughs> twelve years. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve years. Yeah. Okay. What and club? And you're something to get out of the house with a toddler in there. So. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so what's your reason for joining? So what club are you representing uh, tonight? Crystal Lake, twenty-seven, twenty-four. Woo! Crystal Lake. Okay. Great. And what is your current education level? I am a CC silver and a seal bronze. Okay. Awesome. And when I was looking at some of your interests, I noticed that you like to travel. So mm -hmm. where do you like to, any, any for a particular? Uh, weird places that nobody else wants to travel. <laughs> okay. uh, a couple of years ago, we were in Winnipeg. Uh, next week, we'll be in Louisiana. Okay. So, uh, we'll be eating our way through Louisiana. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Well, thank you again for participating tonight. <clears throat> Thank you.
Good to see you. So how long have you been at Toastmasters now? Six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. And what club are you representing? 909922. Uh, that would be crystal clear <laughs> Toastmasters. <laughs> Toastmasters? I'm uh, working toward uh, advanced communicator bronze at this point. And, okay. Uh, so CC and CL. Multiple Excellent. ones. Excellent. Now I remember you were very interested in gardening and outdoors and plants. And Are you still interested in that and, and how is that, that hobby? Is that something that you still like to enjoy? Yes, I spend a fair amount of my time doing um, Land restoration, which primarily, I'm, I'm a good killer. Uh, <laughs> I find buckthorn and honeysuckle and take them out and uh, <laughs> make room for good native plants and shrubs to come back in and make uh, primarily forest preserves healthy. Wow. So is that, like, is, that your, is that your fun that you... Fun, therapy, <laughs> exercise, uh, all kinds of good things. Good. And uh, I, I enjoy it very much. Great, great. Well, it's, going to, it's springtime, so you really got to do that a little bit more, right? Absolutely. Congratulations on Thank meeting you so tonight. Much. Right, well, Tim, I'm not going to ask you the same questions again, but I would like to ask you, how did you get involved in video, and the, where did that start? Uh, there was a speech given by a gal by the name of Jill Morgenthaler mm -hmm. a few years ago at a conference. She gave such a powerful speech about how she met, in person, Saddam Hussein. I, at that point, said, I hope it's being taped. I looked around and there was three cameras taping it. I said, thank God. It took me three years to find that footage, but I made my mind up at that point. There is so much good content with this Toastmasters groups. I'm going to learn to tape. I've always been an electronics nut, so maybe it was the excuse I was looking for, but you know, you start with one camera, seven years later you got three computers, 20 terabytes of space, three cameras, and it's a hobby gone wild. <laughs> Thank you again. I would like to give all of our contestants, Table Topics and International Speech, one more huge round of applause. Yeah. Next is I would like to call forward Iqbal Acha for some important district announcements. Iqbal Acha, our club growth, growth director. Madam Contest Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. For those of you that have not met me, you're looking at this name, you're hearing what Amy just said, and you're saying, what kind of a name is this? <laughs> just remember, my name is Iqbal. It sounds a lot like the game Kickball that we all played when we were children. <laughs> Much easier. And I am one of the district trio members, the top three leaders within our district. It is a privilege to serve all of you. And more importantly, it's a privilege to be here this evening, because tonight I'm in the midst of some of our exceptional leaders in our past that have helped pave the way, such as our, our past <laughs> district governors. I'm also in the midst of some very positive and supportive Toastmasters and guests that are here encouraging our contestants. And I'm very privileged to see such professionalism on this stage as these contestants will hopefully go on and elevate themselves and elevate the division at the Northwest Division Contest. I also understand that I'm in a precarious position because I'm standing between you and the winners. <laughs> so, to wrap this up, I only want to share with you a few things. As Sue pointed out, where's Sue? Sue, hiding in the back. As Sue pointed out, the division contest will be held on April 16th on Saturday. Please come and support your representative. These representatives and your contestants are here looking up and trying to make sure that they know who Northwest Division, who A1 is. So let them know that you care by showing up and being there and letting them know that you're there for them. On top of that, she's also mentioned about the district conference on April 29th and April 30th, and I believe there's some materials back there as well. The only thing I want to share with you is this. We come here to support Toastmasters, and we come to be a member of Toastmasters because we're looking to improve our communication and leadership skills. In order to do that, we have to pay our membership dues, right? And that is exactly where we are today. 
because on April 1st, the new cycle kicks in, and all my club presidents, vice presidents of membership, and treasurers should have been going around the room <coughs> and asking their members to make sure that they pay. So if you haven't written your check yet, or if you haven't swiped that credit card on that PayPal square, make sure you do so as quickly as possible. Especially contestants, because if you happen to lapse, you will lose the ability to compete at the division level. So, membership dues are due. Ask your club treasurers and your vice presidents of membership. Maintain your membership, and let's make sure that we continue spreading the benefits of Toastmasters to all that we know. Madam Toastmaster, thank you. to the moment you all have been waiting for, which is the announcement of the winners, I wanted to take a moment and thank someone that was behind this contest. There were actually two people that were behind it, but I want to thank our chair, Michael E. Swatsky. <laughs> and I also want to thank Sue Hasselwanter for assisting. And last, most importantly, not least, it takes a village. I would like all of our functionaries to please stand so they can be recognized. I would now like to call forward Sue Hasselwanter. And if all we have up here for the presentation of the contest winners. job of thanking everyone. Thank you for the wonderful spread. We have a reputation in Northwest One and you deliver. <laughs> we will start with the Second place for table topics. Seth Holly.